Fairly is a Lombardi finalist, one of four. So if you want to ask that coach about it, you don't have to. Just so you guys know, uh, <laughs> Nick Fairley is a finalist for the <laughs> Lombardi Award. Just want to throw that out. Yeah, well, <laughs> might as well be the first time. <laughs> deserving? Absolutely. No question, Phil. Very deserving. Because like I told him tonight, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. So he's got to go out there and he's got to – He's got to play better in this game than he's played in all the others. It's just not good enough. And, and but he's he's definitely a guy that deserves it. I think his production's been you know uh, game by game getting better and better. And he needs to be better Saturday than he was the previous time. He's he's done. You know, it's uh it's been a progression with him, and he's he's done a little bit, and. Uh, you know, I think he's definitely progressed since, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So, again, you know, it'll be we'll, – we'll keep an eye on it tomorrow, see how see how much more he progresses. But uh, right now we feel good about the possibility of him playing. I'm T. Bell. Same. I think he's made some good progress, Phillip. And, um, you know, again, they're, they're both kind of in the same boat. Uh, but I think that this – if you compare it to two or three weeks ago, you know, it's uh, – They've made a lot of headway. We get them all out of the way. But it's a curse. Same, same. All three of them really you can just lump them in. You know, guys. I know you got a job to do, and I respect that. You know, but my job right now is Georgia and this weekend. So really and truly, you know, as I said before, uh, you know, I'll entertain questions that have to do with that. Because that's really where my focus is. So I'm going to stay on that, on that path. Yeah, it really has. It, it's been really good. And, you know, um, one year when I was at Arizona State, I had Levi Jones, who played left tackle for me, who was the 10th overall pick. And Terrell Suggs was the defensive end that played across from him, who was also a first round pick and, and led the nation in sacks that year. Uh, but both of those guys got better because they had to go against each other. And so I think there's certainly been some of that with our group having to go against against a guy like Nick. And the thing with Nick is just, you know, he's he's so big, but kind of like I was saying about the guys from Georgia, you know, he's just athletic. And most guys that big can't change direction and run like he can. So that has been good for us. That's interesting because they're all a little bit different. Um, but I think really that's kind of what makes an offensive line unique is, is being able to take guys that come from different backgrounds that have totally different personalities and blend that group together into a, a single functioning unit. And the thing I've, I've really been pleased with this year is the way that they've meshed together on the field and off the field. And I'm a big believer that if that sort of thing happens off the field, then they'll play better as well. It's different for us. It's really like family. I mean, these guys never want to go home. I mean, they're up there all the time. And, uh, you know, on their off day, guys, you come through there at any time and there's six or seven players either watching tape or hanging in your office or, you know, Gus is calling for you and you got five guys that are on different sides of the ball just hanging out together. And they don't pull any punches when it comes to teasing each other, whether it's, you know, Emory Blake with a shirt that's too small or, you know, Corey walking around with some jeans that are high waters. I mean, they pull no punches. I mean, they're on each other all the time just like you would in a family. And uh, I think that's what makes it fun. Um, and they pull no punches on coaches either. They'll let us know if we're not dressed properly. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's really, for us, there's not a time limit where we say, well, practice is over now. We can be friends. It's it's family all the time, even when they're out there at practice. How valuable is that when when difficult times go? Oh, it's huge. I mean, if my sisters need something right now, I promise you, they're calling me, and they're calling some cousin or stranger. They're calling their family. And uh, the thing we talk about with family is you don't love family in slices. You take family just like they are, good, bad, and ugly. That's what family's about. And uh, we also know that you don't have to have the same last name or be the same color, be from the same town to be family. Uh, what we all go through together makes. Did you play basketball through? Yeah, you know, I was one of them brothers they pull out the end and stop the clock. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
defensive guy, foul guy. <laughs> now, most people ran a 1-3-1. One, one. We just ran a 1. <laughs> it is a foul. I got him, baby. I <laughs> got him. Whoever your best players, I got five shots at him. Keep him winning. He wasn't making no threes.